Good morning. This is a meeting of the Securities and Exchange Commission under the Government in the Sunshine Act on March 4, 2008. The first item on our agenda is a recommendation from the Division of Investment Management that we propose new rules and rule amendments to permit exchange-traded funds, or ETFs, to operate without the need to obtain individual commission orders. The term exchange-traded fund is familiar to most investors today. ETFs are one of the most popular innovations in pooled investments in the past quarter century. They were first developed in the early 1990s when the American Stock Exchange developed Standard & Poor's depository receipts, known as spiders. That ETF allowed individual investors to buy shares in a fund that held the 500 stocks that make up the S&P 500 index and to buy and sell those ETF shares on the stock exchange. Like English Ivy, ETFs grew slowly at first. In 1997, for example, there were still only two ETFs on the market with total assets of several billion dollars. But in the next 10 years, ETFs grew dramatically in number and in size. By the end of 2007, there were about 600 ETFs with assets of close to 600 billion dollars. The increasing number of ETFs brought more choices to investors. In addition to ETFs that track broad, well-known stock indexes, many ETFs today focus on sector indexes, bond indexes, and specialized indexes created or chosen by the fund sponsor. Some of the indexes are well-known, while others reflect new approaches to investing. And some ETFs are designed to perform in ways other than tracking the performance of a particular index. For example, some ETFs are designed to perform in an inverse way to the index. If the index provides negative returns of 3%, the ETF provides positive returns of 3% and so on. Investments in these ETFs can be used for hedging and for other investment strategies. Exchange-traded funds resemble traditional mutual funds in many ways but they have important differences. Most notably, they differ in the way that they trade. Investors can buy and sell exchange-traded fund shares throughout the day at a price that reflects the current market for the shares whenever the transaction is executed. This trading differs from how investors buy and sell traditional mutual fund shares. With a mutual fund, an investor transacts with the fund itself by buying and redeeming shares directly with the fund at prices that are typically determined as of the close of trading that day. For example, an investor who buys traditional mutual fund shares at noon will buy at a price determined as of the close of that trading day. One reason that ETF shares trade on an exchange at market prices is that the ETF itself doesn't redeem shares in small blocks with investors. ETF shares can be redeemed with the fund and purchased from the fund but only in very large blocks, such as 50,000 ETF shares. Typically, it's a financial institution, such as a broker-dealer, that will redeem or purchase a large block of these ETF shares. The institution then can sell the shares it purchases from the fund individually to investors. The net effect of these procedures is that the trading market price stays close to the net asset value of the fund because of the ability of financial institutions to purchase or redeem ETF shares with the fund. Once individual investors buy ETF shares, they have the choice of trading their ETF shares on the markets or holding them for the long term. Those who choose to trade the shares do so, in effect, among themselves through brokers and stock exchanges. Of course, they pay for this service through brokerage commission and the bid-ask spread of the markets. Meanwhile, the exchange-traded fund itself doesn't sell and redeem at that retail level at all, and therefore, the ETF can be seen as insulated from some of the effects of frequent trading in the fund shares. In response to the investor choice afforded by exchange-traded funds, the SEC has, since the 1990s, issued dozens of exemptive orders under the Investment Company Act to permit ETFs to operate. Our orders provide investors the opportunity to invest in these new products and the orders also preserve the important investor protections of the securities laws. And just last week, the Commission issued orders permitting the first actively managed ETFs to operate. These ETFs will hold their assets in an actively managed portfolio of investments rather than holding the securities of an index. 
Each business day, the ETF will disclose its holdings to the public. This daily transparency will help the markets to evaluate the current price of the ETF shares. Today, the Commission is considering the proposal of a new rule that would build upon the Commission's experience it has gained in evaluating the function of ETFs and the protections provided to investors. New Rule 6C11 would in many ways codify the approach that we've taken in issuing exemptive orders after case-by-case -case review. The rule would allow any entity to sponsor an ETF and sell ETF shares as long as it complies with the conditions of the rule and the other provisions of the Investment Company Act. In addition, the protections of other securities laws, including the anti-fraud provisions, will continue to apply with full force to ETFs. One of the advantages of the rule that we're considering today is that it would permit sponsors of ETFs to bring their investments to market sooner without having to submit an application to the Commission for an order after individual review. And the rule also would reflect the most recent ETF developments that we've evaluated by covering not only index-based ETFs, but also actively managed ETFs, which we first approved, as I mentioned, just last week. The proposing release for the new rule would ask for public comment on whether the rule should provide relief to both types of exchange-traded funds. Of course, when new investment products are delivered to the market, it's important for investors to understand what they might produce. Therefore, the amendments we are considering today would tailor to ETFs the disclosure requirements that apply to other types of investment companies. Under the proposed amendments, ETFs would disclose, among other things, relevant information about the ETF's returns based on market price and net asset value, and disclose any deviation between the fund's performance and the performance of any index that it tracks. The amendments we're proposing today also would build upon the summary prospectus amendments the Commission proposed last fall. The amendments would allow the delivery of a shortened prospectus for an ETF that contains the most relevant information for investors. I should note that the Commission's public comment period for the summary prospectus amendments closed last week, and in the coming weeks the Commission and staff will be reviewing those comments with great interest. Finally, as part of this package of amendments, we are also considering a new rule and rule amendments related to fund of funds investments. As ETFs have become more popular, mutual funds have begun to invest in them to a greater extent, sometimes to gain exposure to a particular market segment. Our proposed amendments address the legal restrictions on these investments by funds and other funds so that mutual funds will be able to invest in ETFs in a way that continues to provide protections to investors under the Investment Company Act.